Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss May June 2021 paper 21 for Cambridge ES Physics exam. In today's class, we are talking about May June 2021 and total time for this exam is 1 hour and 15 minutes. And total mark for this paper is 60. On the second page of your exam paper, some constants and the values are given. And these are very important because you will need them for some calculations in your exam if you remember them it's wonderful if you can't remember them you can simply come back to second page and you can find the values let me highlight the constants you need for es physics exam the first one is speed of light in free space or speed of light in air or speed of light in vacuum its value is given so this is c its value is given in exam sometimes they will ask you to calculate frequency of electromagnetic waves only wavelength will be given to you so you can use f is equal to v over lambda and the value of the v is equal to c because all electromagnetic waves they have the same speed in air same speed in vacuum and their speed is equal to 3.0 times 10 to 8 meters per second so this is very important for es physics and the second constant you need is for es physics exam is elementary charge it's value is equal to 1.60 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs and this is equal to the charge on single proton and charge on single electron in magnitude but the sign of charge for electron is negative and the sign of charge for proton is positive but the magnitude is the same so very important you will need this one for AS physics exam sometimes you will also need atomic mass units so you need to understand one unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 kg rest mass of electron means the mass of electron mass of electron is equal to 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kg this is also important you will need for some calculations at es level next one is rest mass of proton simply mass of proton when proton is not moving or if proton is moving at low speed is also the mass of of proton simply at AS level you can understand this is mass of proton because we are not talking about relativity so this is simply mass of proton it is also important to remember acceleration of free fall in your calculations g you have to use 9.81 not 10 meters per second per second so very important so these constants you need for your es physics so these are total six it's better to remember them if you can't remember them simply come back to second page and you can find the values here on the next page some important formulae are given let me highlight the formulae you need for es physics the first one is for uniform acceleration and this one you can only use when the acceleration of the object or body is uniform uniform simply means that if the acceleration is constant then you can use these formulae the next one you need for as physics is work done on gas or work done by gas and this is w is equal to p times delta v in this case p is constant and delta v is the change in volume if p is constant then you can use this one the next one you need for as physics is hydrostatic pressure and p is equal to rho g h rho is the density of the fluid the next one you need for as physics will be doppler effect and this is when the source is moving and observer is at rest this is observed frequency and this is the frequency of the source and v is the speed of means speed of sound in air this v is also speed of sound in air and vs this is the speed of source you also need to understand when to use positive sign positive sign you will use when the source is moving away so let me write down here when to use positive sign moving away if the source is moving away you will use positive sign if the source is approaching then you have to use negative sign when the source is approaching observer you have to use negative sign so this is how you need to use this form next one is about electric current and this is very important one because most of the time in exam they will ask you about 
how to use this one to calculate different variables i here is equal to a and a is the cross-sectional area n is the number density of free electrons a number of free electrons per unit volume v is the drift velocity of free electrons and q is the charge on single electron or simply you can say q is the charge on single charge carriers and the value of q this is equal to elementary charge and that is simply equal to 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs so you can see in this case q is constant n is constant if the material is the same so n depends on material so very important one if the material means the wire is made of the same material n will be the same so very important point next one is about resistors in series very basic formula simply you need to add resistance of all the resistors if they are connected in series then the last one is about resistors in parallel if the resistors are connected in parallel this is how you can calculate the resultant means the total resistance of resistors in parallel that if all the resistors they are identical resistor means identical they are the same resistors then you can use one simple trick for example if there are 10 resistors they are connected in parallel and they are identical resistors then the total resistance simply is equal to the resistance of one resistor divided by the number of resistors if resistors they are identical and they are connected in parallel so this is very important to understand this formula and the rest of the formula you need to remember for your exam for question number one part a we need to define density very simple question density simply you can define mass per unit volume if you write down mass per unit volume you will get one mark and the mark for that one is p mark simply you need to write down mass per unit volume so if you write down this much you will get one mark and that mark for this question is b mark means it has to be in your answer for part b1 we need to calculate the absolute uncertainty in x but in the question it is given to us the percentage uncertainty in x is given that is plus minus five percent so in order to calculate absolute uncertainty in x simply we can write down in fractional form delta x by x so this percentage uncertainty we can also convert into fraction means simply you need to divide 5 by 100 now you need to find out delta x so simply we can say delta x this is equal to 5 by 100 times x value of x is given that is equal to 4 centimeters so simply we need to multiply 4 with 5 by 100 if you simply multiply this one our final answer will be 0.2 centimeters because 4 is in centimeters so final answer you can write down plus minus 0.2 centimeters and this is the absolute uncertainty in x so in your answer simply you can write down 0.2 plus minus if you write that is good if you forgot to write that is also okay for the sake of this question if you have written 0.1 you will get one mark and that mark is b mark for part b2 we need to calculate the percentage uncertainty in the calculated value of rho in order to calculate uncertainty means the percentage uncertainty in rho we need to rearrange first of all if we rearrange this one we can simply write down rho is equal to 3m divided by h x square now if we look at these quantities on the right side we can see these quantities are multiplied and divide it so in order to calculate the percentage uncertainty in row simply we need to add the percentage uncertainties in the quantities on the right side theory is a number so it has no uncertainty so simply what we need to do is we need to add the percentage uncertainty in m plus the percentage uncertainty in h plus the percentage uncertainty in x percentage uncertainty in x but x has exponent it has power so we need to multiply this one by its power and that's all what we need to do if you look at percentage uncertainty as it is given in this table is equal to two percent so this is two percent percentage uncertainty in h is given that is 
4%. And percentage uncertainty in X, this is 5%. We need to multiply this one by 2. So the total percentage uncertainty in row, that will be equal to 16. So that will be equal to 16% plus minus. So our final answer is plus minus 16%. This question has two marks and the first mark will be awarded if you have written these percentages and you have added them and that mark is C mark means this is for your working if you have done the right working and the second mark is answer mark you will get the second mark if you have got the right answer but if you have got the right answer but you haven't written these steps still you will get full marks for part c we need to use data from table 1.1 and this is table 1.1 we need to calculate average pressure of the pyramid on the surface of the bench uncertainty is not required in our answer as it is given here first thing we need to understand how to calculate pressure pressure is simply equal to force over area in contact force in this case is equal to the weight of the pyramid and that is the force exerted by pyramid on the bench simply we can write down force is equal to mg and a is the area in contact mass of pyramid is given in this table that is equal to 19.5 grams we need to convert into si units means we need to convert into kilograms value of g at as level you need to use is 9.81 area in contact so this is the area in contact with table and that area is equal to x by x that value of x is given that is 4 centimeters so simply we can write down 4 times 10 to negative 2 multiply by 4 times 10 to negative 2. Now if we solve this one our final answer will be 120 pascal and that's the final answer. So our final answer is 120 pascal for this question let me explain to you how marks will be awarded the first mark is for writing this formula if you have written this right equation you will get one mark and the second mark is for substituting these values you will get the second mark and that is also z mark and the last mark is answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get this mark but if you have got right answer you haven't written these steps but still you will be compensated you will get full three marks for this part but if you got wrong answer and you have written these steps means you have done the first step and the second step you will still get two marks even your answer is wrong